That's what makes this show so valuable. Yeah. We're not just spewing stuff that we, off the top of our head, we're bringing guys in that are smarter than us. Consider us as your real estate concierge. Call me all things real estate, credit, refinancing, buying a house. And now, the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. So listen, we've got. Uh, let's go over to Tech Talk with Erica Wallace. So, uh, what kind of app are we uh, featuring this week? This week, we are looking at House Hunter. This app allows you to use their feature list to rate each house that you're going to. So, a lot of agents use a checklist like this, but it can get kind of um, messy because you've got a whole bunch of paper and it's not consistent across the board. You also can take photos of the property and store them in the same note card. So it's basically really customized for someone out looking for a property. There's all kinds of apps that will help you keep track of notes, but this one's really geared towards the real estate search. Mm -hmm. Um, It is $3.99, but I, as as a former agent, I would definitely purchase this for my clients because it really helps the agent understand what the client really likes and what they're looking for. That's perfect. How do they get the app? If they go to uh, iTunes and just search for House Hunter or creativeapps.com. The biggest theme that we hear back is, man, I love that company. I, I just don't get it. Why, do everybody, why does everybody love your company so much? Caring for the clients, listening to uh, you know, what their needs are, and making the, uh, taking the time and making the appropriate recommendation. Uh, tell us a little bit about what are some of the uh, the challenges that these individuals face as far as insurance is concerned? There is a new breed of real estate investors out there. Uh, you know, there is a contract in, uh, in place with the general contractor which identifies who's responsible for what and appropriate insurance, uh, you know, is afforded. Sure. Uh, the danger is when they don't hire a general contractor and they hire several different, you know, contractors on their own, Yep. Uh, you know, between, you know, like a plumber, an electrician, or a carpenter. Right. Not knowing uh, the owner, the property owner, is become a general contractor. Wow. Uh, hence, there is an exposure. So you need to have the right insurance. What's that insurance called? Uh, general liability insurance. Okay. Uh, products and completed operation. Okay. So I think what's happening in people in my generation, the Gen Y, I guess is what sure. we're, the millennial generation, we know everything because of something called the internet. Yeah, Google. Right. Google. 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 <laughs> we're seeing more and more people go, eh, I know how to do it better than anybody, and I'm going to save a few bucks, and I'm going to put my own team together. Of course, because they know everything, and uh, you know they're bound to screw up. Why mm-hmm. take all that liability on yourself? You either needed to get a general contractor, or you need to make sure you're absolutely covered. Don't be greedy. Yeah. You know, buy the you know spend a few thousand dollars more, buy the appropriate insurance, yeah. cover yourself well. And the overall take home message here is that it doesn't cost you anything to make that phone call to ask the question and say, "Am I fully protected? Am I not protected? How do I best protect myself?" Good contractors all have insurance. If they don't have general liability and workers' compensation insurance to cover their employees, that's a red flag. In the state of Massachusetts, uh, you not only do you need a construction supervisor's license to pull a permit, you need to have a home improvement contractor's license, an HIC number. If a contractor doesn't have those, then he's not registered and he's probably skirting around some of the rules and whatnot he's probably not going to pull a permit, especially if you're going to do something like a kitchen or a bathroom where you're going to have electrical, plumbing, sure. et cetera, et cetera. Those contractors have to, in turn, pull permits under your permit. So if nobody's pulling permits and then there's nobody inspecting the work from the municipality, giant red flag. This is going to come back to bite you down the road. Yeah. I, as a buyer's attorney, I always ask for representations and warranties from the seller that says, did you pull the necessary permits? And yeah. if they weren't, the town may actually force you to rip things out. No, Tony? Absolutely. And in some cases, we've gone in to do things that we weren't sure how things were done because clearly an addition or some of the work had happened. And we went down to the, the town hall to look at it and a permit had been pulled but never closed. Ah, so the final inspections had never happened, and it opened up a can of worms for the. But the homeowner needed to know that because they actually those people had just bought that home, so they didn't do their diligence like you were just talking about. What can people expect to have issues with this winter? How can they prevent it? And if they have a claim, how do they initiate it? An ice dam for anybody who doesn't know is with the giant block of ice that uh, builds up from uh, water melting uh, and fills up in the gutter. And basically, what it is is you're having an artificial melt. You're having heat 
coming up through an attic space, it's melting the snow from underneath the snow blanket. Mm -hmm. And then when it runs out into the gutter, it acts like an old uh, ice cube tray in the old refrigerator. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So then now it's freezing on the outside and creates a dam. And now when the water comes down, it can't get over. It goes back up under the shingles and it yeah. comes inside the building. There are uh, heat cables that we recommend that you put inside the gutter and run down the downspouts. That's a common mistake where they do it with the gutter but not the downspouts. So now the oh, water gotcha. runs to the spout and, and, blocks, and it. blocks it back <laughs> up. Right. The preventative thing is uh, good ventilation. If there's an attic space uh, uh, the where the building overhangs the walls called the eave, Yep. Mm -hmm. They have a soffit, and that's called a soffit. The soffit allows the air to come into the attic space through the rafters. And then at the top of the roof at the ridge, there's a ridge vent. And the, mm -hmm. the modern-day ridge vents have a, what's called a baffle. So when the wind goes through it, it creates a negative air pressure that actually draws the air through. Ah. So at the end of the day, you're trying to create a, a, a situation where the air temperature inside the attic is similar to the air temperature that's outside. Yeah. Got so you don't get that right. artificial melt from underneath. The yeah. snow up above is what's melting and coming in. So getting that snow off the roof and down, well, obviously now there's no more melting. Just for my own edification and those of the listeners, my sump pump fails or I've got an ice dam and I need to I need to file a claim. How would I mechanically go about this? And at what point does someone like Tony get involved? Uh, on your policy, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, information how to reach, uh, you know, the insurance company who put a claim in. Uh, the insurance company assigns an adjuster yep. to, uh, you know, to you, to mm -hmm. your claim. And at that point, you could seek the advice of a professional uh, you know, personal company like, like Tony.